Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are basically going to discuss about central limit theorem. Now in order to understand this, let us take a very good example. Suppose I take consider a random variable x and this may or may not belong to Gaussian distribution. Okay, it may or may not belong to Gaussian distribution. Okay, so I'm just going to do like this. Okay, so this will have some mean and standard deviation of variance value. Suppose if I take consider variance, I can write it as sigma square. Now, one important thing that you have to note from this is that, suppose if I consider this situation, I know my mean and variance value. Now, and I'm not strictly saying that this belongs to any Gaussian distribution, it belongs to any distribution, okay? So what will happen is that central limits theorem specifies, first of all, it specifies two different points. Suppose I take samples from this random variable x. Suppose I'm going to take my sample s1. Now in this sample, let me consider that from this random variable, I'm considering 30. n is equal to or greater than 30 data points. Okay, so if I'm considering n greater than or equal to 30 data points. So over here in my sample one, I have considered x1, x2, like this, I have considered 30 data points and I'm randomly selecting it. Okay, randomly selecting it. And for this, suppose I calculated my mean and I'm writing it as x1 bar. Similarly, let me calculate, find out in the next sample. I'll try to pick up some 30 data points again for my sample S2 and this will again be over here and let me consider this mean is X2 bar. And similarly for S3, for S4, for S5, for S6 and many number of samples I have basically considered. Suppose I've taken till S100 samples and every time I'm selecting 30, you know, random sampling values of, I mean, random sample data points from this random variable. I made sure that my n value is greater than or equal to 30. Now this n basically specifies my count of the sample values. Now similarly, I will be calculating all my different different means. So these are all my means and I'll have till x 100 mean. Okay. Now central limit theorem says that if I take all this mean, if I take all this mean and if I try to plot them in some with the help of histogram then I will consider that this x bar which I'm considering all the mean of my sample will belong to a Gaussian distribution with the mean which will be equal to this mean so suppose if I'm taking this sample I'm considering x bar is my mean this will approximately be equal to this mu which is my population mean okay so that this is the condition will which will be getting satisfied by this particular sample mean over here so this x bar will be following a Gaussian distribution with the mean which will be approximately equal to the same mean and my variance will actually be sigma square by n and this is the property that is basically defined by a central limit theorem now this sigma square this sigma square is my variance and it will be divided by n n over here the condition is that it should be greater than or equal to 30 okay so this is what a central limit theorem specify. Let your distribution, let your random variable be any distribution of kind. It may be a Gaussian distribution, it may not be a Gaussian distribution. But if we take multiple samples, considering that my data points is always greater than or equal to 30. And if I try to find out all the mean, and if I try to plot this mean with the help of a histogram or a probability density function, then it follows a Gaussian distribution with the mean, which will be approximately equal to this particular mean and your variance will be sigma square by n. And this is basically, if I'm saying it is a uh, Gaussian distribution, it will have that bell curve. Always you have to remember. And this is what a central limit theorem specifies. Now this, so that is the reason whenever you take, whenever you have your data set, right? And in that particular data set, if you have some number of features along with some number of data points, if you try to plot that features, right? Most of the features will basically be having a bell curve like kind of stuff unless and until they are not much outliers, but most of the feature will be having uh, a bell curve, which will basically specify this, which is specifying this kind of property. Always remember in our data set, we always have a sample of data. We cannot have the whole population data in that, right? So this was all about central limit theorem. I hope you like this particular video. Please do subscribe to the channel if you have not already subscribed. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you one and all.